Hello. Well, I finally managed to get this wheelchair driving around under radio control. So thank you to all of the people who commented and gave me suggestions on the last video. I have to confess that I should have checked things a little bit more carefully as I was progressing, but I got a little bit too fixated on what I saw here on my oscilloscope screen, and I paid less attention to what the logic analyzer was saying and what these actual bytes were that were being returned to me from the power module. And it turns out that at some point along the way, it was actually returning a normal, you know, situation normal message without the shark cable fault. And I just hadn't noticed. Um, the reason I had not noticed or that I wasn't using my logic analyzer very much was that I needed to connect it to the shark bus high, which is the one which has the 24 volt pulse coming through it when the system wakes up. And I needed to be very, very careful to remember to disconnect it every time before I wanted to wake the system up. So for that reason, um, I was a little bit loath to keep doing that because I have a history of forgetting to do things like that. And if I blew up my logic analyzer, I'd be waiting another two or three weeks to get one if I ordered one from Banggood online or something like that. Um, so I, yeah, I just focused a little bit too much on what this oscilloscope screen was showing because the oscilloscope is not going to be damaged by a 24 volt pulse. So I'd just been looking at this most of the time. And I just sort of got it into my head that if these pulse voltages were the way they are here, there's only a small separation between them. I equated that in my mind with shark cable fault. So that's my excuse. Um, but it seems more likely that it was the distance or the time between these sets of pulses. So we have, this is the shark remote, gives the initial or the initiating message, and then the power module replies. And then as we saw in one of my earlier videos, this frame of information gets repeated every 20 milliseconds. So it's doing this 50 times a second. And it seems like this time is quite important. And I had noticed when I first started running Tony's code uh, that this time was incorrect, so I corrected it. The reason it was incorrect is because I had fiddled around with his code a little bit because I think my receiver is giving pulses at a different rate to what Tony's was. So he, he had this timeout here at 25 milliseconds, which was enough for him. But as I showed in one of my previous videos, that caused my... Arduino to turn off and on uh, because this timeout wasn't long enough. So I'm just assuming that my receiver is giving pulses slower than Tony's. So when I did this, it increased the time of the loop. So this is in the main loop function here. Uh, and that will increase the time between these two. And at the first time I did that, I corrected it so that we would again get sort of about 20 milliseconds like that. And then after that, I kind of forgot about it a little bit and I made some other changes. Uh, if we look a bit further down here, we use that pulse in. I've got to say, I really don't like that pulse in function. It's kind of ruining, ruining everything all the way along here. But there's one here where we do pulse in on the direction pin. So this is the left right or the roll stick on my transmitter, that one. And then down here, we also check on the pitch channel, which is the forward to back or the speed control. And these also, of course, cause quite a difference in the loop time. And at one point, what I had done is I just hard coded this to 1500 like that for both of these, because so I had it like that. And the reason I did that was so that I could see, or I could send a specific set of bytes in the message. And when I looked at it with my logic analyzer, I could see an exact sequence of bytes that I recognized rather than sending values that were just sort of whatever the stick position was on the transmitter. I wanted to see something I recognized. So that's one reason I did that. Another reason is that I didn't want the chair to just suddenly start and drive up and crash into my desk and pull all the wires out and hit me in the leg uh, just in case it did suddenly start working and, you know, drive somewhere unexpectedly when I bumped the pitch and roll stick on my transmitter. So that's another reason that I hard-coded it to center stick position like this. Um, but the result of that is that when we take this pulse in, or the two pulse ins here, when we take those out of the loop, the frame time between here and the next frame becomes a hell of a lot shorter. Now, I don't think that shorter was a problem, really. So not exactly sure. Longer is definitely a problem. I experimented with that. Um, so at one point, I think what I was getting 
in the previous video when I was having this problem was the time between here and here was about 100 milliseconds and that is just too much and the power module will recognize that as a fault or will think there's a problem in the cable because it's not getting messages as quick as it should and another sort of secondary problem is that when it gets into that state it needs a power cycle to to re reset itself and try again basically so once you get into that state you're stuck in that state until you reset the power module and a tertiary problem I guess you could say is that the power module will not reset until the remote has stopped sending messages for 10 seconds so if the remote stops for nine seconds and then it starts again that power cycle of the power module doesn't happen um, hope that makes sense so there's all these sort of small issues piling on to confuse me a little bit and yeah I should have just uh, paid more attention to my logic analyzer or figured out a way to use my logic analyzer on the shark bus low but as you can see here this voltage doesn't come down low enough the blue one doesn't come down low enough for my logic analyzer to, to detect unfortunately so that was why I was using it on track bus high which is the yellow one which goes up to 24 volts anyway um, it's all solved now so let's have a look at the circuit that I briefly tried to explain I didn't explain it very clearly in the last video I just sort of waved my mouse around a little bit like this but this is my interpretation of what the spec sheet was saying so there's no resistor between A and B bus lines so I took that out and I tried a 22k to ground and this is the one that's always going to be in uh, active because this is the one going out to the power module there now over here this is also bus B but it's it can be disconnected by the switch there so it's not always connected but when it is connected to the bus uh, it will be pulled down to ground by this 270 ohm resistor and then bus A will be pulled up to 5 volts or almost 5 volts by this 270 ohm resistor and as I mentioned in my previous video um, this didn't make any difference whatsoever so I tried it like this again after I figured out the problem with the frame timings and it works fine like this but I found it also works fine without any of these changes uh, I, I still have that one out this 22k I took that out still but I didn't need to do any of this at all I probably could have left this 22k in as well because that wasn't really hurting anything um, so anyway what I have at the moment is just this I took all those things out and this is what I'm running with and this works uh, um, yeah, like I say that probably could have stayed in there uh, and I also have a 100 ohm resistor in here now the reason I did that is I found that if I did that the difference in pulse levels here was not so bad so I put a variable resistor in there as somebody in the comments suggested to do and I just changed the resistance a bit and I could get it so that this uh, this yellow level here and the bottom of the blue would close in a bit they'll come a bit closer I'll put a little annotation or a drawing over the top here so I'll show you what I mean I took a screenshot of it with my oscilloscope but unfortunately the screenshot function is very unreliable it's pretty much hit or miss whether it's going to work or not and that time it did not work unfortunately so I'll just draw on here what I mean um, so I could use my variable resistor to get these two to come closer together and these two to separate a little bit and I found that about a hundred ohms I would get the same distance of separation between this first frame or this first group of pulses and the second group of pulses in the reply so I thought they'll do <laughs> so that's why I have the um, hundred ohm resistor in there so that was good enough to get it working to the point where I can drive the wheelchair now which is the main thing uh, there are still some weird things going on for example um, what I was just saying before about this pulse uh, frame timing when I was using my fake RS485 connection and also when I used a proper RS485 module in those cases the timing was correct but I still got the shark cable fault error so it doesn't really explain 
why those two situations didn't work. I'm not going to worry about it too much now. And another problem which I will worry about a little bit perhaps in the future is that the signal coming back from the power module, it, it cannot be read by my Arduino. Um, and I really, really don't know why this is. Probably just because the pulses are, or well, the voltages here, are some, something a bit strange. But uh, so this, this scope trace that we're looking at here, these voltages are what we see on here, at this X point like that. And I put my scope on A and B here to see what the voltages were there, and they were quite different. And again, I took a screenshot of that, but I can't show it to you because my scope is unreliable. So I'll draw in here a little bit like what I saw on the scope, and that will sort of explain why my Arduino was not getting any messages back from the power module. Now this is not really that important. The only thing you can really get from the power module that's interesting to look at is the voltage of the battery pack. So you can see it says like 23 volts or whatever, whatever it is, which is kind of handy to know, I guess. If you're driving a long way away, you might want to check how much battery you've got to see if you can get back home. And the only other thing that you can really get from the power module that's useful to know is some error states. I've only ever seen two error states. One is left brake fault or, or right brake fault, depending on which of the motors you have pushed the uh, the manual brake on. If you release that to push the wheelchair around, then you'll get this left brake fault or right brake fault error telling you that you know it can't drive unless you click that back into place again. Um, and the other error is sharp cable fault, which I really don't want to see anymore anyway. So I'm not going to worry too much about trying to get messages back from the shark power module at this point, or I might revisit that sometime in the future. Anyway, so now that it can drive, um, let's take a look at it driving. All right, let's take this blasted thing for a drive. The Arduino and stuff is just in this box, just sort of taped down. Um, I think everything's ready to go. Switch on, and off we go. So I think the way it works is I'm, when I push full, stick, full forward, I'm getting the full speed, like the maximum speed that the chair is capable of. I think that's how fast it was going when I had it on setting number three on the original controller. And I discovered that it doesn't go very fast in reverse. I actually didn't notice this before, I never really tried it, but when you go full back, it's as fast as it wants to go. But that's okay. Probably for the better, I suppose, if you're driving around in FPV anyway. And full left stick will give you this. Rotates pretty much around the midpoint of the rear axle. It's quite nice. Um, so it's uh, just like driving it with the normal stick, I guess. Not not really too much different. It feels like maybe the um, control is not quite as smooth though because I have a feeling that pulse in function that Tony was using uh, doesn't give you the smoothest of response because it's sort of it it's not continuously watching the PWM pulse with an interrupt. It starts off and it waits for it to go high and then it waits for it to go low. So if it was already high when it started waiting, it's going to wait for it to go low and then high and then low. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So. It's not, not the smoothest way of doing things, so I'll be changing that. Um, you don't really notice it until you're just sort of trying to go real slow like this. See how slow we can go. Yeah, it's actually a little bit hard to go slow. You almost need dual rates. When I was driving it in the house before, it was a little bit tricky to get it through the door carefully because uh, the as soon as the dead band breaks here... Oh, that's not too bad. But you've got to be really careful to just hold it there. So you can go you can go that fast, like that, if you want to. But it's it's difficult because it's sort of like a tenth of a millimeter of movement of the stick. But it is all working at least. Thank goodness. I was really getting sick of that stuff. Unfortunately on this grass it likes to thump. 
see that? <laughs> thump, 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 thump. Just doesn't seem to go very smooth. At speed, that is. But this is a fairly comfortable speed. Let's, uh, let's take it down the road a bit. So on this surface, it's actually not too bad. It's quite good. All of a sudden it looks very slow when it's on a wide open space like that. Oops. Yeah, it could be my imagination, but I don't think the G-Track feature is working as well now. You know, that the thing that's it's supposed to be using the gyro to make sure that it goes straight. Of course, the wheels flicking around like that doesn't help. And maybe I need to trim it a little bit too here, but it just feels like it doesn't track in a straight line as well as it did with the normal controller. Let's see how well it does in a field that's not actually flat, like my my lawn there is, well, it was bumpy, but it was mostly flat. So let's see what happens here. Uh, no. Looks like pretty soon these these things are not helping, I guess. But we'll get stuck pretty soon on this kind of terrain, so time to get some new tires, I think. Although if you drove it carefully, I think you could navigate most of this kind of a terrain without too much difficulty. Just got to watch out for uh, dips like that dip. Just there, there's a big dip in the ground, which would probably screw me up. Yeah, so this, this obviously is not going to work. Uh oh. Hmm. Come on, go. Oh shit. <laughs> Alright, well, it's pretty limited, but it's, uh, if you're really careful, it might be able to get around in its current state, but I don't want to, obviously autonomously it's not going to manage like this. So the next step is to figure out a bit more of a off-road capable setup for the wheels and chassis and everything. That'll be fun. There's no problem with power. It's only traction that's the issue. It's got tons of power. What do you think, Puss? Good, eh? It's finally working. Puss has been waiting for months to see this. Yeah, see this is, uh, these things are a problem when you're not on a nice flat surface, aren't, aren't they? Okay, I think I'll leave it there for this video. You know, now that I think about this a bit more, I don't think I'm ever going to bother to come back and try and read the messages that the power module is replying with. I'm just so sick of looking at these circuits that I'm, I'm just really, really glad to have that all behind me now and I can focus on the software side of it, which I have actually put quite a bit of work into already. Well, actually only a day or so, but in that one day, I could make a staggering amount of progress compared to what I've done in two months with this electronic circuits and resistors and all that kind of stuff um, but that will be the topic of the next video so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time